so I'm gonna show you a scoreboard right here. This one right here we have, I'm gonna scribble scrabble. So I'd like to point out that this scoreboard was so juicy that I'm gonna be able to demonstrate both of my strategies, the panda chase strategy and the tie line strategy. So I've gotten in the habit of calling the tie line strategy a bonus line, and that's for my players at work uh, because let's be honest, nobody likes playing tie. And I love it. I love chasing the tie just as much as I love chasing any bonus in the easy baccaro. So with this one, I'm gonna point out to here that we have a very, very, very cool thing going. And I'm just gonna calculate the betting in units. Uh, I got a comment on YouTube and it was a cool comment saying it's easier to do it in units, easier to understand. And I get that, um, but I do know that you guys like seeing profits. That's what you wanna hear, that's what you're here for, is how can we profit while playing easy baccaro. So let's check out this scoreboard. We're gonna do the tie line first. If we do it very simply, I can I can show you right here. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's keep going. Boom, 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 boom. Whoa. Bonus line, right? It's why at work, when I'm dealing, I always say, all right, if you don't like the tie, at least believe me on the fact that I have a good feeling that this line is a bonus line. So when the tie hits, I'm like, I look around, I'm all, did you not hear? You heard me, I'm all, you heard me. Everyone's like, yeah, you called it. I'm all, yeah, I called it, and I've been calling it, and you guys show up here every day almost. But anyways, that's besides the point. I'm just trying to say that if you follow the tie line strategy right here, this, this shoe was golden. So here's where the tie line was created, and we came down here, and we bet, bam, missed. We bet, bam, hit it. Now, that's a lot of waiting to do, though. If you were staying strict to this, this betting strategy, it's a lot of waiting to do, yes. So that's why I always advertise, like, hey, if you walk up to the shoe and you see that it goes bam, 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 why not bet that tie or bet all three bonuses? I'm not saying max bet it, but for, um, like I said, for betting purposes, we're just gonna go in units. So boom, the tie line created, we hit one, we're down negative one unit. Boom, tie pays eight to one. Now we're up seven units. Come over here, we never even had a chance to hit it right here, to bet it, perfect. Right? And it was only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hands to wave. But shoot, I could go take a walk or something. Or maybe maybe I'm playing another table. Maybe you're playing another table. Either way, we come back, we bet it again. So what did we say we were at before? Seven units. That's another eight units. We're up 15 units. Now, if you were max betting, $100, whatever, times that, multiply that by the units that were up. So we come here, we missed it. We come here. We missed the tie bet, yes, but pff, if you were playing on my table where I deal and I suggested to bet all three bonuses right here, oh man, you'd probably fall in love with me for hitting that dragon and for me saying it. And you'd probably look at me like, damn, how'd you call it? I don't know, guess. And yes, that, that dragon right there is pretty damn lucky, but I've seen it all too many times. I've also seen this one right here. See that pop back up? Where I missed the tie, I miss a bonus, but then for some reason, the very next hand, it went dragon, or it went panda, it goes a bonus. That's something that I'm trying to um, more or less uh, analyze when I see more scoreboards at work, but I haven't been able to snapshot and get a, uh, a lot more examples. So let's just cut that one out and we'll just stick to the tie. What did we say we were at right here? 15 units? We bet again, we're down, we're only up 14 units. We lose right here, we're only up 13, only 13 units. Imagine if your 13 units was a max bet. Imagine if your 13 units was $50, $20, or $1. You're up 13 bucks, nice, profit. Either way, it's profit. So, let me delete all this real quick. And we're gonna do, what did we, what did we say that was? 13 units total profit? Big money on that, I don't care what your what your bet is. Like that, that is a solid, um, yeah, it's a solid profit on a chasing the tie or chasing the bonus. Sticking to the tie, huge profit, huge unit up. So let's go to my, my, my Panda Chase theory. I don't want this to be too long of a video, but here we have our trigger for the Panda Chase. If you haven't already seen it, go check out previous videos on the Panda Chase strategy and theory. We your trigger is blue tie, that's the trigger. Then we're gonna get bet Panda for 10 hands straight in units. Don't change the unit amount unless you want to, good luck. Minus $25, doesn't matter, we're gonna stay units. We bet once, there's our first bet, second bet, third bet, fourth bet, fifth bet, sixth bet, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th. Out of those 10 bets, we hit two pandas. Panda pays 25 to one unit, 25 units to one. So we hit the panda for 
twice, that's 50 units to one. We lost eight other hands, so we're up 42 units on that bet. 42 times my bet of 25 is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous amount of profit, especially when we go further into the shoe, we see this another trigger met, and we bet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 hands straight, we hit one panda. So let's, where were we at before? 42 units up because we missed those eight, but we hit two pandas, we hit another panda. So what's 42 to plus 25 units again? Mm, 67, but we lost nine other bets in that chase. So 67 minus nine is what's 50, why am I drawing a blank here? Uh, 58, okay, so 58. And you see, you see further in the shoe, there is no other chance to bet Panda. Not only that, is if I got right here, or I'm sorry, right here, and that's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 40, almost 40 hands into the shoe. It's like half the shoe, a little over half the shoe. And <laughs> I bet quite a bit on that, <clears throat> but I didn't bet here. So I didn't bet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't bet nine of those 40 hands. I bet about 30 of those hands or 31 of those hands. But we know for sure we bet 20 because of our trigger, our chase. Um, this is a very specific, sorry for all the scribble. I'm trying to get some out of there. A very specific chase because you see that it bleeds. And I've explained that in another video where the trigger happens in the middle of our 10 hands that we're betting and chasing Panda, where we restart the count. So if you restart the count, that's where we were able to hit some pandas that happened here or whatever. But 57 units up on the panda chase, 13 units up on the, the tie chase, the tie line chase. This is just awesome. If you'd like to use the strategy, try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know, I wanna hear your success stories. If you lose, pff, obviously you're not gonna win every time, but if you lose, don't bother telling me about it. Just let me know your success stories. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. That was a breakdown right here of scoreboard for the Panda Chase Theory and the Thailand Theory. Uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Follow me for more Easy Baccarat content. Um, thank you for watching.